Hello there my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this intricate looking intertwining loops wirework bracelet. So the bracelets I made for this tutorial here will be available for sale in my shop where I also sell loads of other jewelry kits and tutorials. Link will be in the description box down below. Otherwise if you want to learn how you can make your own, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now the wire I'm using is a regular round copper wire and the first gauge here is a 0.8mm and this is going to be the wire for the loops. And then to add in our beads, I'm going to be using this 0.3mm wire. As for the beads themselves, I'm using these 2mm rounds. The specific ones I'm using are faceted purple coated hematite gemstone beads. So they add a lovely sparkle and colour, but of course you can use what you want to. And we then need some findings. So I've got a lobster claw clasp, an extended chain and a few jump rings to put it together. Now of course you can use whatever kind of clasp you prefer or even make your own. Now we then need a few tools as well. Of course we need our flush cutters so we can cut our wire. I've got chain nose and tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire and for the jump rings. And then I'm using these six-step bell making pliers for any loops we need to make. You can also use round nose pliers for this, of course. To make the coils that we then turn into our loops with, I'm going to be using this coiling gizmo tool. And I'm using the 5mm rod. And to flatten our coils, we then need a steel block along with a jewellery hammer. So you're going to be able to find the full material list and useful links in the description box down below. Otherwise, let's get it all ready and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to be doing is making our coils. So I'm going to attach the coiling gizmo to my desk and then put the rod into the corresponding hole. Then take the end of the 0.8mm wire and wrap that around the handle. And then you just want to start turning it so we can create our coils on the rod. And you just want to make sure the coils are nice and tight and we don't have any overlapping wire. Now I've just coiled the whole rod here. It's going to be more than what we need but I'd rather have too much than too little as it's going to be hard to know exactly how much we're going to need. And also that way you can possibly make multiple pieces. But then I'm just going to go in and cut off the wire from the reel and then we can also undo the other end here so we can remove the coils from the rod and I then also just want to cut off the excess wire on this end just so both ends are nice and neat. So this is now the coil that we've ended up with and what we then need to do now is start to flatten this coil down. So right now all the coils are sitting next to each other side by side but we need to kind of get them to start overlapping each other so just use your hands and fingers for that by pushing them gently towards one side so you can see they start to kind of sit at an angle rather than being straight next to each other and you just want to go through and do this all the way along. Now if you find it difficult to do this with your hands you can always use a pair of nylon pliers and just gently get the coils sitting at an angle on top of each other instead of next to each other. It's the same principle, just make sure you have that all the way along. Next we then need to bring in our steel block here because we need to go from having our loops slightly overlapping like this to actually flatten them down much more. So I'm just going to then also grab my jewelry hammer and just use the soft end there. Then again from one end you then want to start hammering this gently. You don't need to hammer it hard or anything, just do it gently a bit at a time. And in the direction that they're already going, you now just want to flatten them down more. And then you'll see they'll also start to separate a little bit from each other, which is also what we want. So just keep going like this, again, all the way to the other end. Now what I then personally like to do is go back to the beginning and basically go over it one more time, just to give it that extra bit of flattening. And then you can also really start to get them separated out more. So you can see the difference between here, for instance, it's still a bit thick, whereas here we're getting it more flat. So again, just do this all the way along. Now you'll probably find that your length looks a little bit messed up, but don't worry about that, because now we need to start separating the loops out even more. So again, just go to one end and just grab onto one end with your fingers and then move a little bit further up the loops there. And then you want to start to pull them apart and basically open up the loops more. And then at the same time, make sure you flatten them down so they stay laying flat next to each other and then you want to pull them until these little loops are basically sitting more or less side by side so again you want to move all the way along and do that with the whole length and as you can then also see as we're doing that that straightens out the length of loops again so you don't have to worry about all the twists and turns that it has at the moment it'll get straightened out as we do this so now we've ended up with the whole length of loops sitting side by side and it's nice and flat as well. Now what we're then going to do is cut it down to obviously just have the lengths that we need to use. So you can just measure that. I'm just going to be working with about seven and a half inch lengths. So just measure that and then you can go in and cut off that length from the long length there. And then we need two for this bracelet. So 
Again, you can then just use that to measure with and then cut that. And then we do still have a decent length left here. Obviously that will depend on the coils that you did in the first place, but this could easily be used for other pieces of jewelry. But now we have the two lengths that we need. What we're gonna do is just work with one at a time because we want to basically start alternating these loops away from each other. So I'm just gonna start from one end and I'm gonna grab onto the very first loop with one hand and then grab onto the next loop with my other hand and then I'm gonna twist the loop in the opposite direction there, so flip it back over itself. So you can see that is now pointing in the opposite direction. And then I'm gonna step up one loop and then grab onto that and then hold the one next to it with my other hand and then flip that in the opposite direction. So you can see that bottom now now flipped again, but we're just gonna keep doing that, basically rotating the loops one by one so we end up with them sitting one off from each other instead of being right next to each other all the way along. So we just keep doing that all the way to the other end and you wanna do the same thing with the other length as well. So now we have the two lengths ready here. What we then need to do is attach them together and get the final shape of the bracelet. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, make sure one side is flipped the opposite direction to the other one. So you can see the bottom loop there is facing in opposite direction. And then what we need to do is basically interlock them. So you just wanna put the loops into each other like that. So we're just starting at the bottom here. So we get the two very bottom loops there sitting next to each other, but pointing in opposite directions. And then we have the next loops up, again sitting next to each other, but pointing in the opposite directions, but they've also swapped side. And then from here, we need to continue doing that. So just try and keep hold of that bottom part. Then we need to just push the pieces a little bit apart from each other to maneuver them into place. So we're basically gonna be slotting them into each other. And then the gaps that we have between the loops, when we twisted them in opposite directions, we're gonna be filling in with the other length. So we just wanna continue right down here where I'm twisting them together, you could say. We again need to just overlap them and bring them around. So we're basically twisting these two lengths together, but obviously we have all these loops that we then need to make sure they slot in nicely with each other. So they're gonna end up sitting just perfectly like that. And you just wanna continue doing this all the way obviously till the other end. So once we've done that all the way along, it'll look a little something like this. Now you might just find that it's got a little bit of a twist to it. So you just wanna go through and straighten it out. So the whole length here is nice and ready for us to then start adding in our beads. To add in our beads, we need to cut two lengths of a 0.3 mm wire of about one meter each. And then I'm just gonna start with one of them. So you just wanna start towards the end of the wire and then the piece with the loops here, I'm gonna start also towards the end, but I'm just gonna be skipping the first couple of loops. So I'm gonna attach this on, in this case, just the third loop. Just use this little tail to wrap it around a few times. and make sure the wraps are nice and tight. And you can always use your pliers to help push the wraps tighter if you need to. And then I like to push this all the way down as far as it'll go as well. And then we can just hold onto that short little tail while then continuing to wrap this length over to the other side of that loop. So basically where we need to get to is the point where we wanna add in the first bead. So that's gonna be not quite down where the loops meet, but just a little bit past the outer point of the loop. So just keep wrapping until that point. And once you reach that point there, we then need to add our bead onto the 0.3 mil length and just let it drop all the way down. And then we need to jump from this loop here that we've been wrapping around over to the one right next to it. So just put your wire down through, wrapping in the same direction. And I'm making sure that bead stays all the way down there so it's gonna end up sitting basically in the little corner right between the loops, just like that, and just slot in perfectly. And then from here, we need to continue wrapping across the top of that loop, so the outer edge there, again until we get to the other side of it where we then need to add in the next bead after that. And then from there, Add your next bead to the 0.3 mil length of wire and again, let that drop down. And then we can go from this loop that we're wrapping to the one right next to it. Just come down through that loop. Again, wrapping in the same direction. And as you tighten that, make sure that that bead just slots in place and sits in that outer corner between those two loops. And then basically this is how you wanna continue adding in the beads, working your way all the way up along this side until you get to the length that you need. Now, of course, you then wanna grab the other length 
of the 0.3 mil and basically just repeat the exact same thing on the other side as well. And once I've then added all the beads on both sides there, we can get rid of our 0.3 mil wire. So I'm just gonna make sure that I wrapped all the way into the middle with them first of all. And then where I pretty much can't wrap anymore, I'm gonna cut off the excess towards the inside of the loop. Remove that and then just make sure to squeeze down the end and just roll it in the same direction that your wraps are going just to tuck that end away. And just make sure we can't feel it with our fingers on the front or the back. And of course finish all the ends off in that way. Now of course we also need to finish off the ends here so we can wear it as a bracelet. What I'm going to be doing is a wrap loop on either end that we can then attach a clasp to. And to do that we need to free up this wire on the end. So basically the few loops that we left at the beginning or the other end, obviously whatever you have left. What I'm going to do is go in and basically start undoing the loops. So I like to keep hold of everything and you can just use your pliers to undo the loops and basically straighten the wire back out. Now it doesn't have to be completely straight. Don't worry about that. Just so we have a length of wire that we can work with. So undo the loops until we get down where we have our 0.3 mil wire wrapped. And we then have two lengths here that we can work with. So they're coming straight out from the end as well. I'm just gonna take one of them and basically start to wrap it around the other one right down here where the final loops are. Basically as close as we can get. So just wrap it around a couple of times and make sure your wraps are nice and tight. And we can then flip the piece and then cut off the excess and get rid of that end. And then just make sure the end is squeezed in place so it's not sticking out. And then we're left with this one length of wire that I'm then gonna make a loop with. So I'm just gonna go above the previous wraps there that we just made, just a couple of millimeters, and then place it sideways on my pliers and then I'm gonna make a bend to it, about 90 degree or so. Then take my six step bell making pliers, all round nose pliers, and then we need to make a loop by bringing the end of the wire all the way back around and create a full circle like that. And then I'm gonna grab onto that with my pliers to make sure it stays in place and fill in that little gap that we left underneath the circle with the rest of the wire here until we run into the other wraps and we haven't got any more space left. And again, we can then flip it and cut off the excess. And then again, just make sure to squeeze that down as well. And then you have a loop here and we can attach our findings. Of course, you just wanna repeat the same on the other end as well. So once you've finished off both ends and you've attached your findings as well, then it's time to shape the bracelet so we can of course wear it. So I'm just gonna use my hands and fingers go into one place and start putting a curve into it and going back and forth from side to side. Now you don't want to just go into one place and put a big bend into it that's going to put it out of shape, but just gradually put more and more of a curve so we end up getting that rounded oval shape and the two ends of the clasp are obviously close together so we can of course use it. Now you can also shape it around something that has a size and shape you want it to have like a bracelet mandrel, but that's completely up to you. And once we can then use the clasp, the bracelet is finished and ready to wear. So that is how you make this intertwining loops wirework bracelet. And we end up with this really intricate looking design that looks a lot more complicated than it actually is once you know the technique. Now, if you wanna check out more jewelry tutorials, I have loads on my channel within many different mediums. And while you're there, you can always like, share, and subscribe. And there is also a super thanks button below the video if you wanna support me that way. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.